making documentaries is a bit like cosplay. You get to be different people, different cultures. Each time you're in the heat of the edit, arguing with filmmakers, Japanese filmmakers, and filmmakers from other parts of the world. The intensity of the experience at 3.30 in the morning leads to deep impressions and insights about cultures. And today I'm here to discuss five unique insights which I was able to observe while making films in Japan over the last three years. The story began on March 11, 2011, with the tragic events of the Tohoku uh, tsunami and events. And in that context, at that time, Discovery Channel decided to make a wonderful series called Rebuilding Japan, which I was part of. And in the making of that series, something truly cool emerged for me, which I've kept me about Japanese culture since, which is the resilience of the people. Each of the, five, each of the six films we made in the Rebuilding Japan series captured that amazing grace in the context of deep tragedy. One of the clips I want to show you first today is about Kesanuma and the story of a sake maker, uh, a person by the name of Sugiwara-san, who is the sacho of Otokoyama Honten, and they make a wonderful brand of sake called Sotenden. Despite the events of what happened on March 11, Sugiwara-san went on to decide to make his sake immediately after the tsunami so he could brew hope, he could brew kibo, to inspire the people of his city. It's a magical process, a timeless tradition. These men are turning rice into sake, a brew forever associated with Japan. But for the first time in this brewery's 100-year history, they're doing things differently. Kesenuma has long been famous for its sake. But Kesenuma was destroyed by the tsunami of March 2011. Now this man is fighting to rebuild his community against the odds, to recreate his world-class sake and restore hope for his hometown. It's not just manga, J-pop, sushi, Hello Kitty. Resilience, a wonderful thought, uh, which, which explains the spirit of Japanese culture. Um, but resilience that we discovered, that I discovered in the course of making these films, was only scratching the surface, the tip of the iceberg. In another film, we discovered Jedi-like qualities Japanese people have. How many of you took the subway today? Raise of hands. Only two, three. Were you able to guess the speed at which the train was traveling? Okay, I'm going to show you a clip from a film which which was about Japanese punctuality, Japanese culture of always being on time, especially their trains. And in this clip, you'll see something truly amazing and Jedi-like about Japanese train drivers. <laughs> The driver continues to accelerate and decelerate as Mr. Hatoba dictates. Precisely 35 kilometers per hour. Now try doing that. So we thought, what's the magic here? And my own instinct was, must be something high tech. You know, that's what Japan is, right? Cool technology, visitory, techno visitory, stuff like that. And then, we actually discovered something completely counterintuitive. It's completely surprised me personally. So if you can play the next clip. Koki Yuki's method involved memorizing the passing scenery and using landmarks as markers for accelerating or slowing down. With no instruments, drivers were able to gauge time by instinct, allowing trains to run on time. So I was looking for high-tech, something 
funky, something from the future which can help get these drivers to predict the time. Instead, this film led to the discovery of this amazing Japanese forgotten hero who taught train drivers way back a hundred years ago almost to use their peripheral vision to understand passage of time as an image. And then, as signposts go by, to absorb them into your larger vision and predict time. But that's not all. He could also get them to predict the time in such a way that they could guess in how much time they will arrive at the next station precisely. It's like saying, I want to run the 100 meters in eight seconds, and then actually achieving it. And those are the tests that still happen um, in the context of training Japanese drivers. So this, this human touch is what makes Japan truly cool and special. The, any of these trains, given the technology Japan has, could become driverless and completely automated. And yet, this culture persists in not wanting to be hostage to technology, but to balance technology with fine human touch. And that balance was truly wonderful. Uh, that was what was surprising. And it's, it's an idea which I share intimately with whoever I talk with you know, in the experience of making this film. But the next example I want to talk about, another case study, another observation. Just because the Japanese love the human touch doesn't mean they won't show off their high-tech, cool, funky technology whenever they get a chance. Out here, a lead pencil is being cut precisely into a pyramid. A, human, a single piece of human hair is being divided into 35 sections. This is Kiru, or cutting technology from Japan. It's used to cut silicon wafers into smaller and smaller chips onto which circuits can be embedded, like you can see. And these chips, as you well know, drive pretty much what we consume every day. Smart TVs, iPhones, Android phones, pretty much everything. So, where did this amazing technology come from? The technology is amazing. It made me wonder, um, when I discovered this fact while making this film, that Japan controls nearly 80% of the market share for Kiru technology and cutting silicon wafers. If it was 20%, 30%, 40%, even 50%, and there were other countries involved, I said, OK, fine. 80% almost. And then I thought of this image, if you can play the next image, please. This is a country which makes the katana, which used to make the katana more than you know, a few hundred years ago. Is the Kiru technology showcased by the corporations which make cutting so seamless that it can chop human hair into 35 pieces? comes from that spirit and tradition. Is the katana making Kiru technology in disguise today in the 21st century? It's almost a topic for another documentary. I'm pretty confident if we dug it up and researched, we'll find an amazing link between these companies and how they absorbed the katana from back then and took that tradition forward. And that I try and capture in the concept of past forward. こちらがダイヤモンドブレードというブレードになります。コピー用紙が50ミクロンから60ミクロンですから、それの5分の1ぐらいの厚みです。簡単に割れます。はい。こんな薄さです。These bespoke blades are made by binding diamond powder to other specially selected metals. Each one is individually crafted to cut through a specific material and thickness at a certain speed. So as you can see, just like the katana, they also have a very detailed craft-oriented process, of course using high-tech machinery, to make blades as thin as the ones you just saw. But what is truly amazing and cool about Japanese culture, which I discovered making this film, is how the past is recreated in the present. How the katana spirit and the making of the katana spirit 
lives on in the concept of past forward. And that is something which uniquely defines、uh, Japan in a way that is very surprising, unique, and different. The next film I was working on was actually exactly the opposite of technology. It was a film on a group of elderly women freedivers up north in Fukui province who completely stay away from technology and yet represent an amazing vision of what Japanese culture can, can teach all of us、um, who, who come from elsewhere. And this film called Sea Whisperers. Was on the Ama Divers, made very famous by NHK's Ama Chan series. All these, the, you know, the eldest divers, nearly 90, the youngest divers, almost 60. And what makes them ama- amazing is that they are artisanal fishers. They work in balance and in harmony with the ocean. They believe in not taking too much. If they catch an abalone shell which is small, they will release it. They have rules. Where to fish, where not to fish. And the reason why they shun technology is because technology can make the balance disturbed. Because then you will over harvest, you will take more. And that is what they are custodians of. My name is Ai Futaki. I travel the world as a freediver and underwater videographer. My passion for the sea has brought me back to Japan. I have swum with awesome creatures and I hold a world record for the longest dive on a single breath. I'm here to swim with the Ama, female freedivers, who harvest abalone and other seafood while preserving the balance of the sea. I'm so excited, but I feel like an alien in my high tech diving suit. <laughs> I'm puzzled why they stopped to pick leaves. Everyone seems so laid back, and I can't believe that Leiko stuffs her ears with children's clay. So, from rebuilding Japan to Super Japan, which is the new series under which some of these films will be airing soon, captured in this film in particular the idea of balance. Actually, each of the examples I've given you capture balance in a different way, starting with resilience, using resilience to overcome tragedy, to find harmony inside yourself, to, to balance technology with the human touch, as we saw in the next clip. And to take the past forward in a unique way and to have harmony with nature as you just saw. All of this led to a very interesting thought,、um, a new concept, a new way. Could we find a new way of defining Japan, a new concept? And we came up, and I came up with this idea, a concept of auto artisan. Japan exhibits this amazing mastery of automation and artisanship all at the same time in a way. Many other cultures don't. And we like this concept of the blending of two worlds, this amazing balance of the human touch through the idea of artisanship and extreme mechanization and automation through auto, that we actually launched a new format called Auto Artisan to celebrate this Japanese spirit. And in the first clip, which I'm, last clip I'm going to show you,、um, It's on a car manufacturing giant which uses this blend of the human touch as well as extreme automation to make some of the finest cars in the world. Under the hood of this sports model lies a distinct feature the boxer engine. Its shape and positioning set it apart from normal engines. Sitting lower to the ground, it gives the car stability and power.
悪い時には破壊音いや重いような音がしますカツカツとか、まあ、ピッチを刻むような音がすることもあります This is a skill that takes as much as a decade to master and crucial to the transmission that lies at the heart of the all wheel drive system. So here you go, they're using robots and assembly lines of the, the most extreme kind, the best available technology. At the same time, the craftsperson is listening. It's a theme which runs through.、Um, Much of what I've made with other filmmakers in Japan,、uh, this amazing balance. And that is what I wanted to share with you today. I guess it just adds up to this equation. So, resilience plus human touch plus pass forward, a beautiful idea of balance, has led to us creating this new concept of auto artisan, in which we just aired our first episode to capture the spirit of cool Japan. All I wanted to do was deepen. The layer and the debate of what cool Japan is as Japan moves closer to the Tokyo Olympics, as the world becomes more curious and ready to rediscover Japan all over again. Thank you. Thank you very much.